Hello my bookish friends! Welcome! Or welcome back. I am Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley. That's Denver making noise. And today we're doing our February reading wrap up. I read 12 books this month and it, it doesn't feel like I read that much. I felt like I was in a bit of a slower moving month, but I'm happy with 12. I didn't have any five star books this month, nothing that blew me away. So that's a little bit disappointing, but I think overall I had a pretty solid month. I had two two star books, one three star book, one 3.5 star book, six four star books and two 4.5 star books. Generally decent, not not too bad. So as per usual, I'm going to start with my lowest rated books and then I'm going to go all the way up to my highest rated books for this month. If you are new here and you have not subscribed and you are so inclined, it would help me out a lot if you would hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'm also always going to add my social medias over here if you want to connect in a different platform. And don't forget to check out the description below for all the information about these books, along with all kinds of other things. There are some discount codes down there if you're interested, things like that ways to help different causes, all kinds of stuff in the descriptions always. So check the description. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the books. My two two star books are both a little bit unpopular opinions, I suppose. Both of these are actually loved by a lot of people. So keep in mind, this is just my opinion. It doesn't mean the book's terrible. It just means it didn't work for me. The first one I want to mention is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Damn, these birds are chirping a day. They are happy. I read this for my romance reading vlog. I will link that down below as well. I don't read a ton of romance, but it was February and I felt the pressure to read the romance. This one did not work for me, unfortunately, following, I think her name was Piper. She's basically this spoiled rich kid. She is all about designer everything, parties. She ends up making a mistake and her stepdad and her mom decide she's gonna be punished and they're sending her to this small coastal town in Washington where she is going to have to stay for three months and run this bar that was left to her by her deceased biological father who died many, many years ago. I'm sure most of you have heard of this book at this point. I didn't believe it. It didn't work for me. I didn't believe the romance. The hero of the story is Brendan, who is a fisherman in this small coastal town. And they end up falling in love. It's a romance. Of course, that's what happens. Going into this, I knew this was going to be about Piper's growth as a person. And she was going to like understand how shallow she was being. And she did. She did do that. But the thing with that I didn't like was that Brendan, while initially this was a hate to love, he started falling for her before he knew about any growth that was happening. So he went from hating her, eh, being annoyed by her, whatever, to being completely possessive of her. Yes, she was going through some self change, but he didn't know about that. So in my mind, this relationship from the beginning was fake, was phony. So everything that happened thereafter, I could not get on board with. I just couldn't. I didn't like either one of them. I didn't like the dirty talk. I thought Brendan was gross. And that's my opinion. I'm not going to dwell on it. Let's move on. The next two star book that I did not love this month was The Arrangement by Kirsten Modlin. This was my first one of her books to read and one that is really hyped on booktube and I thought I was going to love this. I was so excited to read a new author and potentially fall in love and that didn't happen. I get excited to fall in love when I'm talking about thrillers, not when I'm talking about romances. <laughs> ironically. I will say this was a really fast paced book. It was very short. It was quick to get through. I didn't feel like I wasted a whole lot of my time. Let me tell you a little bit about what it's about. Okay, so we're following this couple Ainsley and Peter. They have children. They've been together for many years. Their relationship is becoming stagnant. And so they decide to make this arrangement where they're going to openly date other people, spice up their relationship, spice up their life. Spice up your life! That just came like rushing back from the 90s. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I can't right now. Anyway, the way they go about this arrangement, I, I was on board with because they're very meticulous about the rules that they're setting. They don't want to fall in love with these other people. They want to make sure that this is helping them to fall back in love with each other. So I'm on board with that. They have all the rules set up. They're like, 
a well-oiled machine going on here. So I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So we follow Ainsley on her first date. I'm like, all right, she got on her first date. Get it, girl, get it, girl. And then we follow Peter on his first date. And I'm like, okay, Peter, all right, like it's happening, it's happening. I look down and I'm 70% done with the book at this point. And I was like, wait, what did I miss here? First 70% of the book, pretty much nothing happens. Then we have this mystery happening that just kind of like, gets right in there, some consequence of one of the dates that happened. And then all of a sudden we're at the twist and the book is over. The twist, I will say, is shocking. It is one of those like heavy hitter twists, but I didn't believe the twist because I didn't have reasoning behind it. I didn't have any kind of foreshadowing. <laughs> it's hard to explain without giving anything away, but the book focused on the plot of this deal with this arrangement, right? And then the twist had to do with the characters in the book. I felt like if we were gonna have this twist, we needed more character development, either in the shape of just focusing more on that, getting more insight into the past, or just expanding the book to make it a little bit longer to give me something so I can see the motivation behind what happened because it didn't, it just didn't sit well for me. I didn't believe it. I felt again like the characters were two-dimensional. There was not enough backstory. There was not enough motive. There wasn't anything to make me believe that that happened. I do think that this book would be great for somebody who's just getting into thrillers, who wants that shock, who is not as obsessed with character development as I apparently am. For me it just didn't work. I have one three-star book this month, and that is Real Easy by Marie Rikowski. I read this in my vlog where I read new release thrillers. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It's just kind of in the middle for me. I liked the idea of this more than I liked the actual story, but it did do some things right. I will say I love the feminist aspect of this. It's set in 1999 in a strip club called The Lovely Lady, and we're following all of these female dancers, and this book is really asking you what does it mean to be a woman. It's marketed as a feminist thriller, but to me it felt more literary or more like women's fiction or just general fiction. It didn't follow the rules of a mystery thriller that I expect to see when something is labeled mystery thriller, either or. Instead of having a defined scope, a defined direction of what we're focusing on, it was kind of all over the place because we're following all of these women. On top of that, we have multiple perspectives, multiple POVs, maybe the most POVs I've ever read in a book, from these women to their children to the detective. There is a mystery element in here and a thriller element, but it's not dark, it's not overly detailed, it's not what I would typically go for like a Karen Slaughter. It's very light because it's more of kind of a sociological view of these women. It does have intersex rep, which I appreciated. I've never read a book with intersex rep before, and so I loved that. And I wish we had just focused on that character. Also, because there's multiple POVs, and because these women are dancers in a strip club, and they have separate dancer names, it was really hard to keep up with the characters because they're going back and forth between their real name, their dancer name, and then we're skipping from point of view to point of view to point of view to point of view. So it was just kind of felt a little bit chaotic, a little bit all over the place. I wish it had focused on Samantha slash Ruby, who I thought was our main protagonist and wasn't. But if we had just focused on her story, had a few less points of view, and really gotten to delve deeper into that idea of having an intersex character in a strip club, the nuances that come with that and her experience. We do get into her experience with like not being able to have children, her relationships and the people that she surrounds herself with because of that. But I just wanted more of that. I thought that was where this book shined. But I would recommend this if you want a kind of feminist fiction novel with a little bit of a mystery thriller aspect to it that's not too dark, that's not too gritty, with like a sociological, almost literary tone to it. Also, there's some 90s nostalgia in here that's really cool too. So if you're an 80s baby like I am, you might enjoy that. Okay, for my one 3.5 star book, we have The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. And the more I sit on this, I almost want to call it a four star because I read this with reticence and I still enjoyed it. And the more I sit on it, hey, what happened? Sit on it. The more I sit with it, 
<laughs> that sounded bad. The more I appreciate it. So we're following Lucy and Catherine. Lucy's father was an astronomer and he passed away recently, but she has been helping him with his work for years and years and years. And when she gets a letter from the contest of Moth, Catherine, who is looking for a recommendation for someone to help her translate this astronomy text from French into English, she decides she wants to take it on, mostly because her partner just married a man and she is not she's she's upset she thought that they were going to be together forever and she gave in to societal's expectations and married a man instead of staying with her and so she's like i need to get out of here so she's like i'm going to translate this text i can do it i've been helping my father for years but of course no one recognizes that because she's a woman this book is very political and so she ends up teaming up with Catherine to get this translated and to prove to all of the men in this society that she can do this, that she's talented, that she's smart, she's, she knows the math. There's a lot of math involved. Catherine was married to a man for many years and he has passed away as well, which is like the perfect situation for a woman back, back in these days, I feel like, because when you're a widow, you're not expected to get married again. She regains control of her body, of her home, of her assets, of everything, and is able to just kind of sit back and relax for the first time in her life. A lot of the conflict I felt was well realized. It was well explained. It made sense from where these two characters started out to get where they ended up. And there's a lot of feminist talk about women's rights, about science. This is a little bit science heavy. I would say a lot of the book was more political than it was romance. The romance kind of came secondary to the politics, but I think I enjoyed it because of the politics, even though the romance was a little bit light. I still rooted for these two women. I thought it was really good. So like, yeah, I think, I am probably going to make this more of a four star than a 3.5 star. It had a lot to say. The characters' behaviors made sense. Their motivations made sense. It made me feel empowered and I thought it was actually quite a lovely book. So I would definitely recommend this. Okay, let's move on to my four star reads, which there are quite a few of. This one, a few days have passed and now I'm thinking maybe it's more of a 3.5. I don't know, I might have to sit with it for a little longer and that's Near the Bone by Christina Henry. I liked what this did. I was a little bit skeptical going into this because I knew there was gonna be a lot of abuse happening in this, but it actually didn't bother me. I really need to explore why. When I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, that book triggered me so much because of the gaslighting and the negligence from everyone around her, if you've read that. Um, so I thought this was gonna do that for me too, but it really didn't because I knew where it was going to go because I knew she was going to overcome this. It didn't weigh so heavy on my spirit, I suppose. But anyway, this book is following Maddie and William. They live in this isolated cabin in the middle of nowhere in this snowy atmosphere. It's very much isolated setting in the snow. Definitely a good read for winter time. William has a temper. It does such a good job of showing the intricacies and the nuances of an abusive relationship and showing how she has to just tread so lightly and how exhausting that must be in order to have to live every single day like that. I just felt for her so much. He would beat the shit out of her if she did something he didn't like. He wants her to have kids. He wants her to have sons because a man needs sons. She's had some miscarriages. He's very religious. He thinks that she's doing some kind of witchcraft to, in order to not get pregnant, to get back at him or to spite him. He's, he's just so deluded and so fucked up, this man. Oh God. One day she finds this fox and its body is just laying in the snow. There are some footprints around it. There are massive footprints. She's like, that is way too big to be a bear. And why didn't it take the body of the fox? Why did it just leave it there? I don't understand. So she brings it to William's attention and they discover that there is some kind of creature that is in their woods he needs to kill this creature. So they set off to do that. But meanwhile, there are some other people who are on the mountain trying to find the same creature and they have some interactions and things go down. We delve into her past and figure out how she got to the place where she's at today. And then we see her journey as she goes through this ordeal with the creature and her husband. Well, 
it's her husband. I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of discussion about monsters and the juxtaposition between this supernatural creature and the monster that is her husband. Which is worse? Which is more threatening? Which one threatens her life, but which one threatens her spirit or both? It is going to stay four stars. Now that I'm sitting here talking about it, yeah, I'm going to keep this at four stars because I did enjoy this. I do think it's well done. There's that one. Let's move on. Okay, my next four star book is Karen Slaughter's Pieces of Her. I wanted to read this standalone to make sure I had it read before the series came out. So this is being adapted. I think it's coming out in the next few days here, this week, I believe. So I'm excited to see that. It is probably her least popular book. I think that is because of the way that the story is told. So we're following this mother and daughter. Typically we get sister and sister from her. Of course, Karen Slaughter is amazing at relationship dynamics. That is what she does so well, that and just getting to the gritty, dark truth of things. But the way this is told, it's in two timelines. For the first, like, I don't know, 30% of the book, you don't understand what that second timeline is or how it's connected to the story. And so it's really hard to feel invested in that timeline at all before you know what it is. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like this as much. Once I understood the connection between that timeline and, and the current timeline, I really, I did enjoy this. I felt like it was her go-to formula that works so well for me. That second timeline was just so distracting at the beginning. So the daughter is Andy and the mother is Laura. Andrea moved back from New York where she was trying to make it in the biz and showbiz. She didn't want to be like a superstar. I really related to her, but she wanted to like follow her dreams. Her mother, Laura, got sick with cancer and she moved back home to help her out. At the beginning of the book, they're in this diner, having this heart to heart when this guy walks in and starts shooting the place up. Laura, out of nowhere, becomes this badass, takes control of the situation and kills the guy. First chapter. So there's all the speculation. My mom is just the speech therapist who's just very quiet and demure and had this very kind of boring life. Where did she learn these tactical moves? Was she in some kind of secret agency? Like what the hell is going on? There's all of this press. Laura then tells Alex she needs to run. Get out of here. And so Laura starts finding all, out all of these secrets about her mom's past. I love the characters. I love this mother-daughter relationship. Once I got past that first kind of 30%-ish and realized what was happening, I thought it was great after that. So I will say, based on the preview for the television show, I think they're going to let you know off the bat in the show the connection between these timelines. So I don't think that's going to be an issue in the show. I'm very excited to watch it. The next four star book is actually kind of surprising for me. I read this in my romance vlog and that is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. This book does not take itself too seriously. It is alien smut. It's alien smut. And I think the tone of that really helped me to enjoy this because I didn't poke and prod and I didn't get so deep in my head about it because there were some things that could be problematic. But if you take into account the context of this, that it's on a completely different world, completely different species, and these two characters are just trying to... Hi just trying to navigate and have sex, you know? It was fun, it was funny. Our main character was hilarious and a badass and I loved her thoughts. Basically these girls are abducted by aliens and then as they're on their way to wherever the aliens are taking them, the ship goes down and they end up on this ice planet. Our main character goes out to explore and finds this giant blue man and <laughs> <laughs> they fall in love. This series is huge by Ruby Dixon. I think there's more than 20 books in here and I don't mind alien porn apparently. So that's cool. Watch my romance vlog video if you want more in-depth thoughts, but definitely recommend this one. It was a fun read. My next four star read is this bad boy right here. House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. I was really excited for this. It's been a while since I've read SJM. Hey, 
no, 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 no. You don't get to drink my coffee, sir. You have enough energy. You know, I had fun with it. It was everything that I expected it to be. Again, SJM follows a very specific formula and this did not disappoint in that aspect. Her character work is amazing. Her plotting is amazing. Everything that's in here is in here for a reason. She very specifically ties things together in a way that is just very well done, have to respect that. It was a bit chaotic at times. I did not love it as much as the first one, but I thought it was good. I felt like it delivered what it was intended to deliver. I don't know that I'm in the place in my life where I love Sarah J Mass as much as I used to. And it did feel like a bit of a slog for me. I'm not gonna lie, it was so long. This is like three of my usual books. So yeah, it felt like I was just ready for it to end at some point. There is a twist at the very end that gotta give her credit. I don't know, I don't know the implications of that twist and I'm still interested. So it's not like, like I'm probably gonna continue to read these. <laughs> even though I don't know if it's for me anymore because I'm intrigued. My interest is peaked. I can't let it go. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say about this without giving spoilers. It was good. It was fine. I'm not obsessed with it, but I am happy I read it and I probably will continue reading this series. Four stars from SJM. The next four star book I read this month was the Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I was impressed by this. This is your mainstream type thriller, right? This is not something super dark. It's not something edgy or gritty, but it was well done. I would compare this to Sarah J Mass's writing because of the way it's plotted. Character work, maybe not as deep delving as SJM, but this was very intentionally written and very intentionally plotted and I respect that. The first 50% of the book is pretty much set up so I would say it can just keep going if you're like getting there and you're like, nothing's happened, what's going on? Because after that 50% mark, the reveals and the twists just flow. It's very Alice Feeney-esque type twists where it's like one thing after another, you make a connection, you make another connection. And it's a bunch of small twists that then lead up to a big twist at the end. I liked that. And the big twist, I didn't really see it coming. Some of these tropes have been done before, but I felt like the execution was great. I also want to say the audiobook for this was incredible. It was really, really good. There's a lot of French in here, as you might presume. Just little phrases that you don't necessarily need to know what they mean or explains what they mean, etc. But if you're not comfortable with like just reading French, I would say definitely pick up the audiobook. It adds to the atmosphere and it made it that much more enjoyable for me. And on top of that, it's a full cast. We have all these different points of view from these different characters in here, all of these suspects. Each one of them has a different narrator in the audiobook and in, they're all really great actors. It just really added to that experience for me. I really liked the atmosphere. It felt like I was on a Paris vacation, but with murder. But what I didn't like about this was the way that the past information was told to the reader. So you have all these different points of view and I think it could have been helped by having multiple timelines as well. So we're following Jess and she is leaving England to go to Paris to visit her half brother. She's kind of leaving in a rush because she has a situation she needs to just like get behind her in the past. So she's gonna kind of hide out with her brother for a few months. And she gets there and Ben's gone. So the whole story is her trying to figure out where is Ben, what happened to Ben. Everyone in this apartment is a suspect. They all are connected. They all have secrets and there's a lot going on there. But the way we hear about Ben's story through this is from the different characters. Instead of having a multiple timeline to do that and show it, they have these characters tell us about it in present tense. But the way they did it, <laughs> They just kind of like go off on tangents and be like, oh, I remember when I met Ben and this is what happened. So it's very much like on this dreamscape-esque tangent where it just kind of is a little bit contrived. They, ha they have to continually step out of the present tense and have these like fleeting memories of their interactions with Ben. And so that was a little bit cheesy. It was a little bit contrived, but other than that, I thought this was really well done and I had fun with it. So I definitely would recommend this. I'm giving it four stars. The next four star book I have is The Girl from the Well by Rin Chupico. This was recommended to me by one of my old friends, Lauren. So thank you, Lauren, for recommending that. 
I haven't read a lot of Japanese horror and this one really worked for me. It had a certain je ne sais quoi that I don't see in American horror and so it made me really excited to want to read more Japanese horror. Hello, editing Elizabeth popping in real quick just to tell you that a lot of what I'm about to talk about is based on my naive presumption that this author is Japanese and they are not. They are Chinese Filipino but the story is based on Japanese horror so and it's not translated. It was written in English so just take everything I say about Japanese horror in general with a grain of salt moving forward. Okay. This was described to me as The Grudge meets Dexter and I was on board from that comparison off the bat and while I do feel like definitely that's a good comparison it has something extra in there that those comparisons don't imply. You know I don't know I don't really know how to describe why this worked for me. We have the perspective of a ghost so maybe that's it. I don't typically like haunting stories but this one I really like. It had a lot of heart but it also was not afraid to delve into the darkness of human nature which I really love. And if that's a trend in Japanese horror then I'm going to be a really big fan of Japanese horror because that kind of delve into human nature into the dark side of our personalities and that idea that no one's good and no one's evil that we all live on the spectrum of good and evil and the choices that we make every day can change that. Like that's what I like reading about. And this definitely did that. We follow this ghost who she wants vengeance for her death and for anyone who's been killed. In this story anyone who's murdered someone those spirits like hang on them. And some people who don't have any empathy or emotions they don't mind it. They just carry these spirits around with them their entire lives. And then other people who feel guilty, those are the people who maybe want to die because they can't handle the weight of the spirit that's clinging on to them. Like I thought that that just whole idea is really cool for me. I thought it was really interesting. As far as the writing goes, I think, I'm not sure, but I'm, I think this is a translated work. And I think that's probably the reason I had a little bit of a hard time with the writing style. It was very straightforward. It wasn't anything that was like super flowery or anything like that but it was a little bit choppy. A lot of the action would happen really quickly without a whole lot of detail. So a lot of times I would have to go back and be like whoa 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 did I just miss something? Like what how did this how did we get from here to here? Go back and then I was listening to it so I was like I'm gonna re-listen to that part and I actually hadn't missed anything. It was just very abrupt and kind of like I said choppy but nonetheless I thought the writing was still really good. I really enjoyed this one. Definitely interested in reading more Japanese horror. I know I want to read some... I think her... I think her name is Kano Minate? Oh no what is her name? I want to read Penance and Confessions. That I'll put it up here. If there are anything like this one very excited for that. Okay let's move on to my five star reads this month and I have... oh! I don't have any five star reads. 4.5 star reads. <laughs> um, there's two of them. These are my last two of the video. The first of which is Radiance by Grace Draven. This I also read for my romance vlog and really enjoyed this one. This is another interspecies relationship but this one was so elegant and refreshingly unproblematic for romance. I, I loved it. I really really loved it. It wasn't what I thought it was going into it. I thought there was going to be all of this tension and they were finally going to fall in love with each other but it wasn't. Like they were just friends. They were like besties, good buddies and just building this deep deep friendship and respect for one another and then one day they're like holy shit I love this person. It's like what you think you want from Love is Blind. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's love is blind without the narcissism. Sorry bro. Basically. The woman is human. The man is not. He is also blue. Is he blue? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting my barbarians and fantastical creatures mixed up. They're both not really serving a purpose within their courts and so it's kind of an arranged political marriage and they start off on this journey just like being repulsed by one another and by the end they have this beautiful magical love. It's full of consent. It's full of gloriousness. It was just so lovely and hopeful and beautiful and I would definitely recommend this. If you're into fantasy at all and you haven't read this go for it. It's really really good. 
Lastly, I want to talk about my last 4.5 star read, and that is The Violence by Delilah S. Dawson. I think this is probably my favorite book that I read this month. It is a feminist horror book. We're following three generations of abused women who are living in a future five years from now in which there is a another panini. In this one, people are turning violent for no reason. They are infected by something. They blank out and commit horrible violence and then remember nothing. Once you have it, you're mostly living normally, but then when it's triggered, you're, you're gone and then you come back and you just like wake up surrounded in blood with all of your loved ones dead. I love this like slightly into the future fiction anyway, but we also have this added level of this kind of feminism where all three of these women who you don't necessarily like all of them, you understand why they are the way they are and then you fucking root for them to overcome these obstacles in their life. You root for them to stand up for themselves. We have a grandmother who is like a prissy bitch, doesn't know how to love, she's super rich. Things go wrong for her and we see her true character and she has kind of learned to go with the flow. We have the mother who is dealing with this abusive husband and has been for years, been with him since high school and doesn't know anything else. She thinks, well, maybe I can use this cover of the violence to get my husband out of the picture. You know what I mean? That's a, the description of this, but it's just the tip of the iceberg of this story. And then we have her daughter who's 17 and in a relationship with this really popular guy. All of the other girls want to be with him, but he wants her to do things that she doesn't want to do. And she's also living in fear. I mean, she, she grew up with this abusive dad and so now she feels like she has to deal with this guy. It's so good. There's so much I want to tell you but I can't because it would be a spoiler but as far as the reference to the panorama it really does make you feel comforted about the place that we're in now. As bad as it is it could be worse. It really could be worse. Like you could black out and wake up and have killed your husband or your child or whoever and my battery's about to die. So I'm gonna cut this short and call it a day. But thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you so much. And that is my February wrap up. Don't forget that life is short. So read Riley. Cheers. And goodbye.